the weather's been pretty lousy recently, so I've been playing some more with my simulator. And this is a very basic simulator, but it suits me. It uh, manages to capture my flying style really well, especially the landings, I find. And it takes less time to walk out and uh, bring it back. <laughs> anyway, the point of this particular video, at the moment I'm using my Taranus, which is connected via the body box lead or the PPM port out to a little USB universal simulator dongle. But what I really wanted to use was this Radiolink TS6 that I'll be reviewing soon, so keep an eye out for this. On the Taranis I can connect the USB port, but this USB port I believe is only for setting the controller up and uploading firmware and such like. As far as I know it cannot be used as a buddy box or as a joystick controller. What to do then? When I bought this Universal Simulator dongle, um, you'll see these plastered all over the interweb. It comes with a bunch of cables and such like, and I thought, being universal, that I would just be able to plug a receiver into here, PPM receiver, and be good to go. However, if we take it out, Unlike some of the other dongles that I've seen, there is no provision here for connecting it directly to a receiver. I have seen almost identical units uh, for sale, which have a little servo type connector here for hooking it up to the receiver. What to do then? Well, I think with a little bit of investigation and ingenuity, I can somehow connect this cable up and then I can connect it to my receiver and check out my new controller. Let's take a closer look. Using my trusty multimeter then set to the resistance range and continuity test. On the USB connector itself, the screen will be ground, which is this pin here, and either of those two pads there. If we know then that that end of the USB connector is negative, then this is going to be our positive connection here, which goes to the chip and to various other places. Positive then to here, negative to one of these pads. The signal wire, fairly self-explanatory, is going to be on the center of the jack plug here which clearly will go to the connection at the end of the jack socket there. That's my idea then. Positive, negative and signal. I'll go ahead now and solder this wire in place. This, by the way, was rescued from a defunct servo. The moment of truth then, as you saw, the wires connected, plugged into the PPM port. This is quite a neat receiver. It can do both SBUS and PPM, as well as obviously the PWM standard outputs. And that's just selected by a little button on the side there. But as I say, full review of this kit coming up soon. And that's assuming that I don't blow it to bits in the meantime. Let's connect it up then. You have a bluey light on the receiver, which means it's in its SBUS and or PPM mode. The receiver and the transmitter should come bound together anyway. Let's put our transmitter on. Everything looks good. And indeed, on the monitor for the control settings, we can see our aileron or roll movement, elevator, throttle and rudder. Excellent. Let's go into the simulator. Chocks away. So now I can practice my crashing completely wirelessly. Hope you enjoyed that little tech tip and will subscribe for more goodness coming your way. Thanks for watching. Whee!